Hey, I got another video today. 2004 Infiniti G35 3.5 liter coupe. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be changing the front brake pads and the front rotors. The specifications for the front caliper bracket bolt torque spec from All Data is 112 foot pounds. Front caliper bolt torque specs, those are the smaller bolts that go that hold the caliper onto the bracket. And uh, those are 22 foot pounds. And then the wheel lug nut torque specification is 85 foot pounds. So, what I've got here on this little uh, boot tray that I have that I use is uh, I've got my two torque wrenches, I've got my half inch, and I have my 3 8 drive. The torque wrench is set at 110 foot pounds or 112. My smaller torque wrench, my 3 8 drive, is set to 250 inch pounds because that's as high as it goes. So it's basically almost 21 foot pounds, which is almost my spec, which I'm fine with. <clears throat> then I have an assortment of ratchets. I have a long handle flex head, um, half inch, and then a shorter half inch. And then I have a long flex head, 3 8 drive ratchet, and then a stubby. And then I have my uh, 22 millimeter deep socket and then I have my 14 millimeter shallow socket and then these are going to be the tools I'm going to use to take off the caliper from the bracket and the bracket off of the steering knuckle. Then I'm going to be using brake parts cleaner or carburetor parts cleaner whatever you want to use will work fine for this job and then disc brake quiet spray I'm going to spray on the back side of the pads and then my caliper grease I'm going to put that on the pads where they slide into the brackets, the little thin sheet metal brackets that go into the uh, caliper is where you just put a little little dab there. And then my um, disc brake caliper uh, compression tool or spreading tool. And um, for this, this should do fine. Um, for heavier duty applications, you might want to get something a little bit larger, something with a little more force. Um, but this one here will work fine for this job. And then... Um, so I've got it up on jack stands. I got one here on the front right and another one on the front left. And just wanted to move that light out of the way. It was blinding me. So here's where we're at. The brake pads are at about, I don't know, I'm guessing like three to maybe four millimeters. Um, there's a little squealer tab on the inner and outer and it's rubbing the back side of the rotor so it's uh, indicating that uh, from the uh, brake pad manufacturer they when the brake pads get too low that squealer tab will come in contact with the rotor so it's just making that noise there so the customer was concerned and they wanted me to do a brake job on it so that's what I'm going to do today hey so I briefly wanted to mention that uh, PPE, personal protective equipment or safety equipment um, in any form or any capacity is always recommended. Um, if you don't know how or what to wear or what to do or whatever, I mean, there's, there's really, there's a lot of information online from OSHA, uh, lots of information just on, on different, different ways to protect your hearing and, and to wear eye protection. Um, always wear a pair of steel-toed boots when you do work like wheel bearings, brake jobs, suspension, things like that. I have made the, um, every once in a while I've made the mistake of not wearing my steel-toed boots. And uh, as soon as I get done with this, I haven't started the job yet, but as soon as I get done with uh, this little clip here, I, um, I'm going to put these on. And then um, this, is, this is what I use here. Um, just a pair of gloves, some hearing protection. Uh, don't get the cheapest ones you can find. Get a good pair. Um, personally, I got these uh, these Howard Light uh, L7s. Um, that's what I use. I got two pairs of them. I just bought two of them from Amazon. And then just, just some regular plastic safety glasses. And then especially when you're using impact tools or when you're hammering on things, you really want to protect your hearing. You really want to protect your eyes. You've only got two eyes. You've only got two ears. Um, by the time you're 40 or 50 years old, if you if you do this as a career, you're gonna you're gonna be you know probably half deaf or going deaf, and you'll have tinnitus. 
and you could have smashed up toes. You could have, you know, um, bad eyes. You know, one, you know, you just, you just don't, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to damage the, uh, you know, your body. And these are the things you're going to need for the rest of your life. So, uh, this is the, this is just something that I wanted to show to make this be something that's a very big, important part of your repair process and you being a mechanic. And even if you're DIY, you need to have all these things. If you don't want to be safe and you don't want to do things the right way, then you shouldn't be working on cars. Um, you know, I laugh at all the, all these people who make videos on YouTube who are DIY, who wear shorts and flip flops. And, you know, I think, I think they're just, you know, they're, they're complete losers and idiots. And I don't know why they would do that especially when they're doing a brake job or suspension or wheel bearing. I have no idea why anyone would do that. Um, you know, sacrifice your safety for comfort. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so as I started doing this job, I found that um, using a half-inch uh, breaker bar was very helpful for the uh, one of the bolts. I was trying to take off a, a 22 millimeter head of bolts that hold the uh, brake caliper onto the steering knuckle. And... Um, either a deep socket or a shallow socket, a six point or 12 point is the, uh, the 12 points inside the socket. You, if you count in a circle, you'll count 12. You, if you count in a circle here, you'll count six. So if you didn't know what that meant, now you do. And then, um, get a little hook here, or you can use a, a bungee cord or a piece of rope or something. Um, these are specifically for hooking the caliper somewhere up out of the way once you take it off to remove the uh, brake caliper bracket and the rotor and all that. So this is very helpful as well. Or a piece of thick wire that you can bend in this shape would be very helpful. Um, and then one thing that I wanted to point out is, uh, is that um, when I was taking off, sorry about all the light, the lighting issues here. It's really, really dark in here. When I was taking off um, these 14 millimeter headed bolts here that, that are the, uh, the uh, bolts that hold the caliper onto the caliper bracket. Um, the one thing you want to do is you want to make sure when you when you loosen this one up, don't take it all the way out, the upper one. And the same thing for the caliper bracket because when you go to take the, and loosen the other one on the bottom, it's going to make the whole caliper pull off. So you want to just leave it in like one full turn or something. And it's just a little trick I've learned. That, that, uh, that I always use that helps me out. Sometimes I forget, but most of the time I don't forget. Um, but yeah, just try to keep that bolt in there on the top about one full turn or, or, you know, just once you loosen it, just leave it and then just immediately do the bottom. And then once you get them loose, then you can just, you know, finger them out or you can use the socket. The socket itself, um, I found that using the socket to put onto the, to the bolt or the nut you're trying to take off can really help make the job move along if you don't have any air tools or if you don't have any electric tools or anything like that. So that's just a, a little tip that I'd like to leave with you. Okay, so off camera I already loosened up the bolts. The 22 millimeter header bolt, 22 millimeter socket and then the uh, 14 millimeter um, for up here on the caliper. So, so I've already got them loose, so I'll just go ahead and take them out now and uh, keep things organized. Put everything where you can find it um, and just try to remember what you were doing and the, the order you took everything off. Um, when you take the caliper off, and usually they'll come off this easy. If you're going to rotate it, that's okay, but don't rotate it in a circle, the caliper, because then you're going to mess up the brake line. So the way you know the brake line is straight is that when you look at one end where it's fixed mounted onto the car, you follow the little lines in the brake hose, and as long as they're straight and not twisting, then you know that you don't have the, uh, the hose twisted up. So then you'll just find, in, in this case, I'm just going to leave the camera where it is, but um, I don't want to keep moving around, but in this case, um, up here, there's the strut. So I found one of the strut rings, and I just hooked the little S-hook and the caliper to it so that the S-hook is holding the weight 
of the caliper so you're not damaging the brake hose and uh, you're not, you know, just, you just want to, you know, get it up out of the way and don't do any damage as you try to fix your car. That's the biggest thing is not doing damage <laughs> to your car while you're trying to fix it. Okay, so then uh, you'll just you'll just wiggle the brake pads off. Um, so if you're gonna you're gonna use a, a screwdriver, might as well just grab your safety glasses and kind of make make those two uh, go together every time. So what I always do is once I take it out, I set it down like this, straight onto the ground like this, so I know that that's how it came off. Even if I walked into this brake job with all the parts scattered everywhere, I would know how to assemble them, but if you don't have experience, you're not going to know that. Okay, so then I just wiggle off the other one and pull it out, and then I'm just going to set it down like this. Almost every single brake job I've ever done, the curved side, some, some brake pads are going to be a little bit different, but um, anyway, the curved side is going to be the part that's going to be like, you know, curving with the rotor. And then I just look at where the little squealer tabs are, the orientation of them are on the bottom, and then I just stick them right here on the ground right here. And then um, uh, just make sure that these little shims or these little um, uh, brake pad uh, holders are, it didn't come out or anything. You want to make sure that, that, that everything stays together as best you can so that everything goes back together like butter. All right? So I got the caliper bolts loose, the caliper bracket bolts, excuse me, loose. So I'll just thread those out and um, try to have the car up off the ground. Like, like if you're going to work in a garage like me, I don't have a lift, but so if you're going to work, try to keep it like right here at, you know, the wheel at your chest level, because it's just really easy to grab stuff. And then you still have enough room to get under the car. If you need to um, you drop something or, or you want to get under there to do further inspections. And then, so basically, if the, uh, I guess you could do it from the, either the bottom of the rotor or the bottom of the, uh, the, front the front bumper, as long as it's off the ground about like a foot and a half, that's more than enough room to get in with your breaker bar. Or just using a ratchet, you'll have room, because if you're too low to the ground, you just won't have room to move it. So that's why you um, lift the car up about a foot, like minimum, like, foot to a foot and a half. So I've got these bolts out here. Keep the washers with the bolt and I just like to set them down on the ground like that so that everything just stays together and I just organize them over to the right or to the left, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And then you'll take the caliper bracket off and you'll make sure that these these little um, caliper gliding pins make sure that they they move real easy and in my case they this one here feels sticky I'm just gonna lube them both up with the uh, the stuff I showed earlier the um, brake and caliper grease and so I'll take these out and I'll wipe them off with a either a blue paper shop towel or just a shop rag and then I'll um, clean them up real good maybe I'll use a little bit of brake parts cleaner and then I'll just put just, just a thin little film, you know, thin little layer, excuse me, of uh, the brake caliper grease in there and then put them back in there. And then I just set this down like this. Um, you really can't get this wrong if, it, if you flip it all upside down or whatever. Always just remember that the bolt threads are going to line up with the, with the, the steering knuckle. So, um, you know, I, I don't think because of the way this is just the, this shape of it, there isn't any way you can get this upside down. You could go this way, but the, the, there's no, you're going to the threaded parts on the rotor that doesn't make sense. So it's always going to go this way. So it doesn't matter. Um, you know, that's not a big deal. It's not anything to really worry about. So just put this down over here. And then um, in this case, I hope the, there's no screw stuck in the rotor here. And I think it just comes off. All right, good. So if there were a screw, then you would need to get a... Phillips head screw, it's usually what I see them as a Phillips head screw, and then um, you would get the type that has the, um, the head on it where you can hammer on it, because if you don't get these impact, either flat head and a Phillips set, and you hammer on them, you'll break the, the, the plastic handle, you just destroy them. So um, these, are the, these are like demolition screwdriver set or, or hammer, 
you can hammer on them. So just make sure you can, you know, hammer on them. And then what you would do is you'd take a hammer and just tap it. If it had a little Phillips head, little set screw in there, and you would just take a hammer and hit it in there a couple times, and then it would get it loose, and then you could get it free. And uh, if it had them. Most cars do this. Car didn't. No, it doesn't look like it ever had one. Nope, there's no thread in there. So, so this is this is the first step here. So, um, okay. So, step number one: when you're, whenever you do a brake job, is just make sure you have all the tools. Make sure you have your PPE, personal protective equipment. Make sure you have proper jacks that are that are strong enough that can are rated to lift the vehicle. I use these three tons. I use one on the, on the front right, one on the front left, and then I use three ton jack stands, which is more than enough to support the weight of just the front of the vehicle, not the whole vehicle. Just this one corner of it is three thousand pounds. I don't I don't know what this car weighs. I, I'm gonna guess four thousand pounds. So it's 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 really just over. You know this can really handle a whole lot more weight. So it's it's good. It's not. It's not going to break or anything. So you want to make sure it's secure, and you want to block the wheels so it doesn't move. Even though it has an e-brake, block the wheels. Jack it up to about a foot, foot and a few inches, foot and a half, where the, basically when the wheel's off, you want it to be chest level. You're working here on the ground. Put a piece of cardboard down on the ground. Um, get your tools organized. One thing that I wanted to also show is that um, you can't see it, but this is red Loctite. So... Um, yeah, you can't even see it. So, um, but anyway, so use red Loctite on the bolts that go back into the caliper and the caliper bracket. I always do it, no matter what. And then also have a paint pen. You'll be able to see this one. I just got a paint pen from Harbor Freight Tools, and this one is awesome. And then you mark, once the bolts are in properly and tight, then you can mark them so that way you know you did them. If you get interrupted, you will know that you did them because you can see that they are done properly, um, painted, excuse me. So, another thing that I wanted to say is that um, when, when you have um, everything taken apart and you have everything secure with your, with your, uh, with your S hook, you have the caliper, there's, there's a shot of this here, and um, you have everything ready here, you'll, you'll have the rotor, You'll have the brake pads, and then you'll have the uh, disc brake quiet. I'm going to spray that on a few minutes before I put the pads on. You'll get a little bit of a, you'll get a little bit of the uh, uh, grease, caliper grease, in here, just so it doesn't come in contact with the rotor or the brake pad surface itself, and these little cutouts where the pads are going to go in, and um, and then you'll just use uh, brake parts cleaner to clean off the bolt threads and then you'll use your red Loctite and you'll just use a little bit of it. You don't need to use a lot. Um, just just like two drops or something it would be sufficient. And then, um, yeah, and then you just go ahead and assemble everything back together. So um, I'm going to just uh, do a few things off camera. I'm going to compress this uh, brake caliper here with my tool here. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and um, get everything ready. And these brake pads are junk, so you can use these to help you. And I'll make, I'll make a shot of that in a sec. You can use the brake pads to help you compress the, um, the piston back into the brake caliper because they're junk and you're not going to reuse them. Okay, so another thing that, that I feel is important to say is that um, when you take off the old parts, make sure that you have five lug holes on the rotor and then just set the rotor next to the other one and make sure that it's the same height and then you can you can actually like flip them over and put them on top of each other like this and just make sure that they're the same diameter and then just make sure that you match up your brake pads to make sure that they approximately, that they are the right shape and the right size physically before you destroy the packaging from the auto parts store and rip everything apart so that you can't even return them because you've destroyed the boxes. So cut everything open real clean and carefully and 
So just in case you have to uh, put it all back in, you can still return it. That's a tip that I um, that I think would be helpful for anyone doing this, and it's what I do all the time. And you'll make the parts store people happy. If you have a commercial parts account, you'll make your commercial people happy, and they won't be MFing you when you leave behind your back because you destroyed the box or because you sent them back with grease on them. Even though they weren't used, they were just dirty. So clean your parts if you touch them. Make sure they're nice and presentable in the same original packaging as you got them in. And so here's a shot of the uh, disc uh, caliper compression tool or, or uh, uh, spreader tool um, with the old brake pad in there. and. Uh, You'll, you'll just stick that in there um, to where it, it just wants to uh, go into there um, naturally the way they are on the car so that it doesn't bind up or anything. And then um, you just uh, just squeeze it all the way in. And if, you, if it stops right away, maybe, maybe reposition your, the brake pad you have on there because maybe it's binding or your tool isn't properly aligned or something. But it should compress all the way in easily, maybe, you know, like, 15 complete turns or something like that and just do it slow and uh, you won't have any issues and then just just make sure that you compress it all the way down to, to where it stops and you're just going to be doing all this by hand so you don't want to use a tool to uh, to you know like a, a pair of vice grips or something or, or a pair of pliers to turn the, the green handle you don't want to do that you want to be able to do this by hand if not then you've got an issue with the caliper and you need to fix the caliper or, or get a new one or, or, you know, maybe, you know, find another way to, you know, maybe you've got the tool in there wrong or not the proper tool, but you want to reassess the situation. Um, there are other different types of brake calipers that are, uh, that are called uh, um, caliper rewinds. So they'll use a special tool, but this, this does not use that. This just uses a standard uh, pushing out, pushing in. There's no, there's no rotating of the caliper piston. So uh, this particular caliper just uses just a standard uh, brake caliper compression tool and um, so that's how that looks and then so I got the bolts in already here the upper and the lower 22 headed millimeter bolts and then I'll show you how I torque those So, hey guys, if you, uh, if you haven't subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing? Like, share. Alright, so here's my Atkins torque wrench set to approximately 112 foot-pounds like I showed you in the beginning of the video with the specifications that, are, that I got from all data. So uh, just make sure you're, I always like to just double check as a habit to make sure I'm going the right way. I, I like grab the socket turn it and feel which way the ratchet is turning and I just make sure that it's tightening. So that's what I'm going to do and so I'm going to go ahead and, and what I like to do is, is when I get this set up, if you ever feel like you, you need to turn the steering wheel to make it easier to do the brake job, then do it because I found that that helps. So in this case, I don't need to do that and so I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of use my knee right here and then I'm just going to kind of push up on it and use my, put my arm, my right arm against my knee, and just push up on it. And I like to, I like to do it twice. It's just the way I like to do it. And uh, so I know that I've done it. Right? And then, so then, so that you know that you've got them tight, and you know that they're torqued, you just go again and hit the upper one time, and the lower one time and then I have a paint pen that I've already already opened the other one I showed you that one I haven't opened yet so kinda, you can use a, a, a chalk marker which works really well or paint I prefer paint because the chalk can't, can't wash off but for I would say for this it'd be better to use paint pen but I'm just going to use this for now, just for demonstration purposes. And uh, so, uh, yeah, you'll just go ahead and mark your bolt. 
And if you're if you don't like comebacks and you're crazy like me, I'll hit him again. It's just that my my nature of uh, being over worried for the customer for the repair. I want to make sure I don't have a comeback. Call it OCD, call it anything you want. It's just my way of ensuring the quality of my repair is, uh, you know, the customer's paying for it, so they're, they're going to get everything 100% right, and I'm not going to have a comeback. So I'll go back and I'll hit them again. I do the upper caliper bolt and the lower caliper bolt, bracket bolt, and it never hurts to double check to make sure you didn't fall out of specification, and I'm all good. Ratchet's all good. Everything's going right the right direction, my tool is set up properly, everything's good, so I know that it didn't it didn't um, bump off and go the other way or, or something get loose and I get, get my specification off, so I know that's all good. And so I know that I've done the upper and the lower, and then, so, so I'll take my caliper, and I've already, Sprayed the disc brake quiet on, and then I already looped up the little um, cutouts here for where the brake pads go on, and these brake shims are the brake, um, these brake uh, anti rattle. I, 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 I just can't remember the name of them. Yeah. So, and then what I always like to do is I like to put a one lug nut on the rotor and just make sure it's all the way flush while I'm putting the caliper bracket on because it'll interfere with me getting the bolt started. So now I know that that that. Because I set my old brake pads down with the squealer tabs on the bottom, curve side is going to be to actually, um, yeah, okay. So this one here will go on here. And always remember, use your camera in your phone to take pictures if you're not sure how the stuff goes back together or just don't take apart both sides. So if you have to, you can always go look at the other side to see how stuff goes together so that you know that you've done it right. So use your camera and your phone. It's very helpful for doing auto repair work, as I have said in my other videos. And I need a small flathead screwdriver. Alright, so this, uh, this little brake bracket here. There we go. So Brake caliper um, bracket or anti rattle clips, shims. Um, you want to just make sure that you've overcome these little these little parts here that you got to kind of push back at the same time. I, I thought a flathead screwdriver with a little mini flathead screwdriver would help, but if you just kind of push them in, they'll kind of just go in and uh, like angling from one side and going into the other. So you'll, you'll find a way to get it. You just, you just Kind of figure it out as you do it. Do the other one here. Okay, so when the pads are fully installed, you'll see that they're in the little teeth on the on the, on either end of the brake pad are in their uh, recess, the the little um, part that that the, into the anti rattle clip of the caliper. You'll see that they're pushed in all the way properly. And then you'll also look around on the back side to make sure that the same thing has happened here. And then you'll make sure that um, the brake pad, this is very difficult to film. Okay, so, sorry about that. So then you'll make sure that the brake pad is behind this little spring part here, you don't, if you, if you find yourself forcing it, it's just because you have to overcome this part.
part here and you have to just angle the pad in and that's that's kind of what I was fighting earlier and trying to film and do it at the same time um, is really making it almost impossible for me to do it while filming so yeah once those are back behind there once the pad is inside its uh, proper grooves and then this is just kind of like a, a mental checklist you can just kind of go over in your head that the pads are in flush against the rotor and that the brake pad material is touching the rotor and there's no issues there and then um, and then there are my paint marks there on my caliper bracket for the two uh, 22 millimeter headed bolts and then I can also if you if you look closer um, and while you're doing this job make sure that, that you, you'll see that there's a separation there you'll see the washers are in there too so if you're putting everything together as you should then you shouldn't have to uh, really worry but I always like to double check this is my quality control because this job has my name on it and I don't want to come back and maybe the washer not being there wouldn't matter if the bolt was tight but I don't want to take that chance so I just make sure everything's done properly it was engineered and designed that way for a reason so I just put things back the way that, that they came off because that's how they were designed to work and and another thing you got to think about too is that the car has been driving like that for however long it's it you know since the last brake job or since it was from new from the factory so um, and there weren't any issues so odds are everything is exactly the way that it should be from the factory when you're looking at something like this in this case so it's all back together so now I'm just gonna put the caliper back on and then one thing that you want to pay attention to is that these um, these caliper um, sliders they have a, a flat spot on the top and the bottom which when the caliper is on they fit into this spot here the flat part so if you put them in wrong and try to thread them in you might be able to thread them in but you'll bend the hell out of that slider pin and then you'll you'll damage this and then you won't ever get it right so you want to make sure that that flat spot mates up with this flat spot here on this upper ear of the caliper that when it goes in to thread into the threads here when you put your nuts in and then or your bolts excuse me so then that's how much red loctite I put on them and that's um, of course there'd be more on a bigger bigger bolt with more threads on it but this is just about as much as you want you don't want it dripping onto the ground or the you know you just want it just enough just enough just to coat the threads at the very tip and uh, that's all you need all right, so once you've gotten the caliper back on, um, you're basically just going to put it on the same way that you took it off. Um, and then you're going to make sure that the caliper glide bolts, um, these uh, bolts here with the rubber boot on it, um, you want to make sure that the flat side is facing up and then it's it's uh, into the groove here that's cut into the to the caliper you'll see there's a groove in there and that where the flat spot mates up with with that little kind of a cutout a triangular like a l-shaped cutout in there for for it to fit in there and then you'll make sure that the same it's the same thing on the bottom you see the flat sides on the bottom so you can reasonably guess that the flat side is in, in properly but you want to make sure that you look at it closely to make sure that it actually is and that um, you make sure that you have that all in properly and then torque your bolts and um, uh, in, in my case, in, uh, I mean in this case here, um, I got my torque wrench set to 250 inch pounds which is roughly 21 foot pounds and then um, then I have it set going to to the right to tighten. Um, it feels like it's backwards when you're tightening it and it is because the bolt is facing you but as long as you have the ratchet going the right way you're not going to make a mistake so just that's why I, I showed earlier just to, to hold the socket on to the ratchet and then turn it the way that you want to turn the bolt and make sure that you, you feel the resistance and then you'll know that that's the right way that you have the ratchet set and then you torque it so you check the upper one and then you check the lower one and just uh, make sure that they're torqued and you're good to go and I always just like to double check and make sure everything looks like it's in properly the brake hose serration those lines I was talking about earlier are straight and they don't twist around and uh, that means that you didn't twist the hose 
Uh, all these are little things in your head as little check marks, um, as uh, quality control to make sure that you've done a good, a good repair for your customer um, or you've done a good repair for yourself. Um, in conclusion to this job, 2004 Infiniti G35, 3.5 liter front brake job in rotors. Um, the main things you want to make sure is before you put the wheels back on, you want to make sure that all your nuts and bolts are tight. You want to make sure that all the hardware is on properly. You want to make sure your rattle clips, your anti-rattle clips are not um, rubbing into the rotor, that they're, they're not on the wrong way or twisted or bent or broken. You want to make sure the brake pads are fully seated, the pad material is touching the rotor, and you want to make sure that, that everything looks right, the brake hoses look good, everything's all good. You just want to make sure that you've done everything properly because th these are brakes. This is serious. This is not like doing spark plugs or something. So um, then once you, you're 100% sure all your nuts and bolts are right on the caliper, the caliper bracket, your pads are in, everything's all good and back together, you're confident, then go ahead and put the wheels back on. Um, I like to use a little bit of anti-seize. It's the silver stuff or you can use the copper stuff around the, uh, the threads of the, uh, just for the lug nuts studs and then I thread them all on by finger just get them all on tight with my finger and then I'll, I'll put a socket on them and then I'll get them a little bit tighter with the socket and then I'll use my my uh, half inch ratchet and make them as tight as I can um, with the ratchet and then once once I, I know they're tight I'm going to just kind of you know slam on the side of the tire with my fist and I'll, I'll know that the all, all the lug nuts are on tight or at least tight enough so you could lower it to the ground because if the wheel doesn't, you know, tip forward or back, then you know you got them tight or you got most of them tight. So then you can lower it to the ground confidently knowing that pretty much they're almost tight if you don't have an impact tool of any kind. And then, then you'll get your, your uh, half inch torque wrench and you'll set it for 85 foot pounds. Make sure it's foot pounds, not Newton meters, MM. That's commonly... Uh, something you're going to see in specifications, you're going to see NM for Newton meters, which is the metric system, and then SAE is foot pounds. So you want to make sure it's in foot pounds, or I don't know the conversion for Newton meters, so I know the inch system, so it's 85 foot pounds. And then, so what you'll do is I'm just going to demonstrate with the torque wrench. So I got a little carpet here for my knees when I get down on the ground, it really helps. So I just like to start and go in a crisscross. And that click sound it means that I've reached 85 foot pounds. So this is called torquing by hand with the torque wrench. You're not you're not actually using your hand, you're using the torque wrench, but it's called torquing by hand. So once I know that I've gotten them all around, I'm going to start from the top, point it at 12 o'clock, and just go around clockwise, make sure I didn't miss any, make sure that they're all good and all tight, this is how you know you didn't skip any. And then what I like to do is once I've done that, I'll just do the final torque, make sure I'm 100%. Okay, so all five wheel lug nuts are tight. I've already done the other side, so this is the last side that I did. Last thing you want to do is make sure the brake fluid is full at the proper level, and then you want to go step on the brake pedal about five, six, seven times until you feel the brake pad seat in and the pedal gets firm, and that's what you want. You want, the, you want to seat the pads. So once you do that, then go back and forth in your in your parking space or wherever you're working on the vehicle to make sure that it stops before you go drive it. You want to go drive it, make sure it feels good and feels safe. You always want to make sure your wheel lug nuts are tight. If you have any doubt, you need to immediately stop and you need to get that taken care of before you go any you know do any driving or give it back to the customer. That is so very very important that the lug nuts do not come off. So. Um, Thanks you guys for watching. This is another video from HMAR Mobile Tech. 
David here in Sacramento here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.